Hey Shamla, good morning. Hey, morning guys, how are you doing? Fantastic, it's great to see you and, and hopefully you could be back in studio in due time. I could give you a big hug if that's allowed. I think it's allowed, <laughs> I think it's safe because by now you're, you're the, um, have some symptoms, which you don't. Right. <laughs> Shamla, I, I know you have, <laughs> I know you have a lot to chat about with your guests. So uh, Shamla, you take the wheel. Yes, hi, good morning guys and welcome to Unique Not Different. I'm so excited today because I have a multi-dimensional mother here. She is a medical doctor by profession. She is an expert stories, a short story artist, and she's also the mother of Rowan. And the reason why I pointed out the mother of Rowan is because that is a huge accomplishment and that's why it's a Rowan is autistic and Ruan is writing CSEC this year. And I would like to find out from Dr. Deborah for telling you how, how is the process like in terms of Ruan preparing for exam because exam starting next month. And when he heard that, you know, given the lockdown, given the wait time, given everything, how, how is the process like in terms of preparing and can you just tell me what are these steps being taken for him to prepare? Well, initially, when morning, Shamla. Oh, gosh. It's so Good morning. You look beautiful. <laughs> so when, um, when the lockdown started, actually, Rowan said to me, we, we, we were one of the evacuated families from, from Libya. So Rowan said to me, this reminds me of Libya. And, wow. and okay. that was a really long time ago. And... Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's interesting how trauma can become embedded in your psyche. So right away, I decided to do to take steps to make sure that the boys were healthy mentally. Um, yeah. Sure. The important thing for for or t for kids on the spectrum, but also um, for everybody, I think the important thing is to is to maintain a routine. And I saw mm -hmm. the, the, the I saw the differences where my my older son so Rowan would would stick to his routine and my younger son didn't and so my younger son actually didn't do that well in the beginning and mm -hmm. and he's become a little bit depressed so it, it was really important to maintain a routine and I had a friend who actually called me because her, she, her son was really struggling and he's autistic and um I asked her you know how did she present the whole issue of being in the lockdown and and she said well we just had a talk and I said, well, I can write a story about it because social stories really do well with kids on, on the spectrum because they are um, very visual. So, so that was my first th thing. I, I did the social story and Rowan actually enjoyed the social story because this is just the, this is just the first part. I, do, it, I know it's the other way around, but I, I, you make it quite visual. And right. it's basically telling him, explaining to him what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, it's been harder because... Um, even though they've had regular classes, it's harder to maintain um, your focus on concentration. And especially for somebody who's, who is autistic, the focus mm -hmm. on concentration is not necessarily their, their, their um, it's actually one of their weaknesses. Yes. It's been, it's been more difficult in that regard. Um, but we've, 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 we've kept up with, he's had lessons, shorter, shorter time spans. He sticks to his routine. So he gets up at a certain time. Mm -hmm. he, um, he, he has lunch at a, a particular time, although that kind of varies, but he sticks to his classroom schedule um, and his lesson schedule. I and believe in routine as well. That's right. And one of the things that, we, that I would do when I see the, the, the anxiety starting to build, I, mm. I, I, I took him for a drive. So I took him for a drive by school, you know, and, and to let him see some familiar, familiar buildings and... Um, uh, and, you know, like when the Pui was flooring and stuff, I took him to steal all, all those things. So it, the anxiety has been, you know, up and down. Um, right. Of course, when, when they announced exams, that's when the, the challenge came. And, right. and it's challenging because, remember, they would have been in school pushing towards exams, but they're mm -hmm. at home probably going like 15, 20 miles an hour. And then they're exactly. within a month to escalate to, to 100 yeah. or 100. 100 miles an hour um so okay. that has been a challenge and and he, he said to me i don't think i can make it i don't think i would be able to because one of the first things he said to me 
he said to someone, they asked him, um, what is the scariest thing? Uh, what is your scariest thought? And he said, mm. the scariest thought is to have to prepare for something all my life and then right. it not happen. And then when it does finally happen for me to fail. And, and that is every CSEC student, every CAPE student, but also the SCA students are the ones who I'm really, I mean, that is, think of, think of he's, he's almost 17. Think of the little Exactly, the little children, yeah, yes. Exactly. But so, I know, um, I know you encapsulate, encapsulate all this into a poem because he has been venting to you. Can you share what is the name of the poem and share it, it might resonate with other students? The, the name of the poem is called These Four Letters, and I wrote it right. to one, and I wrote it to myself as a reminder to myself of what he's been going through. And it goes like this. These mm -hmm. four letters. These four letters, four letters define my fate. PSEC Cape Examinations, July 13th, the start date. The date, July 13th, I hear the bulletin, and my mind begins to churn. Will I be sucked into the eddy? My thoughts begin to burn. To burn, they're racing now at top speed, faster than the speed of thought. Will all my hard work, all my studying, will it be all for naught? For naught, this COVID-19 lockdown has created such anxiety. I'm caged, confined, locked away, and it saps all my energy. My energy to learn, to understand, to think and more, it's true. I'm scared, will my brain even work? Can I do an MCQ? An MCQ, I guess it could be worse. It could have been paper two, three's essay writing. So to choose A, B, C, D, or E, I guess, it's really a blessing. A blessing? Ha! More like a curse. The curse of this wretched lockdown. It's literally turned the whole world on its head and my world upside down. Upside down, right side up, it's been a tough journey. No physical school, but learning still. Routine, now that's the key. The key to staying on the path. But will I really do well? Will I be successful in exams? Only time will tell. Tell me, mom, was it like this, this tough when you were at school? I placed my hand on his shoulder and said, son, I'll teach you a golden rule. A golden rule to understand, especially now as times are rough. As you glance upon your mirrored self, tell him that you're enough. You are enough, enough, I tell you. No exam can tell you thereof. Four letters are important. Yes, that's true. But the greatest of these is love. Wow, <laughs> that I read that and I was blown away and I am still blown away with the types of words that is used and how it, it just comes in, you know, in such a sort of But I need to recognize you as a mom who doing short stories yourself. And I want you to summarize faster because I want you to read one of your short stories. So basically, let me tell you guys how I learned this. I saw that we promoting stuff on Facebook that were telling me and then I saw read to me where one of my friends were doing doing um was doing the reading and then I was like author Dr. Deborah but all of you I was like what and then and then um I logged on and then uh, someone wrote a story on Facebook saying that their daughter was bullied and she wrote one of the story to encapsulate what her daughter went through and how she um how she, she should overcome it as a young girl. And Deborah, what inspired you to do this? And what are your plans for the future with this short story? Well, I, I like I said, I, I'd been writing short stories for, for Rowan since he was diagnosed because I was told that, you know, writing short stories may, may actually help to explain. So every single situation, every new situation, even going to the bathroom or raising your hand at school or, you know, how to be, how to, um, what, what school entails. Those are the mm -hmm. things that I would put a short story. Every little, literally everything, going to the doctor, that kind of thing. Right. Um, I had written, so I'd written that story called Nehemiah's Story. Um, mm -hmm was for a friend's son and mm. another friend and colleague um saw it dr Casa. she saw it and she asked me to write one for her daughter because she said her daughter didn't like her hair and so i wrote my curls are beautiful and i didn't know how uh, i i said okay i'll try um right I, just, I had been writing poetry dabbling with poetry before um and you know because i wrote my my dance with autism um yeah. but I really enjoyed the, the, the process of my curls are beautiful because I did all the illustrations myself. 
And right. then when, when Laura Eskag told me about what was going on with her daughter, I decided mm -hmm. that I was going to uh, make her, uh, em try to empower her by making her the protagonist in her own story. So that's how right. I wrote I Am Super. And you want to turn this into a business next book? I do, definitely. Um, I actually... I actually have been and um, I've been I've been advised and coached to publish to publish my stories because those two stories are actually quite I was told they're quite empowering and and not only young girls identified with my curls are beautiful but but a lot of us older older girls as well because you know there was a time when we were told that our curls weren't right so, yeah so, you know so that I, I, I went through that phase where they would always tell you. You hear wrong, flow and so on like that. Right, right. And I want you to quickly to see how fast you can. To, to, yes, read. My curls are beautiful, but before I leave, before you start, let me just take my exit. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this week's Unique Not Different. Um until next week. Be good, do good, and I present to you, Dr. Deborah Lemieux with my curls are beautiful. My curls are beautiful. I may be six, I may be 10, or maybe an eight-year-old girl. I hate my curls, and that's the thing. I don't think they're beautiful. I hate how they go round and round. I hate how rude they are. They don't listen to what I say to do. They're naughtier than me by far. I want my hair to be flat and straight. I don't want a bushy, frizzy curl. I want my hair shiny and down today because I want to be a pretty girl. So I told my mommy and I told my dad, and I wished my curls away. The next day, I woke up with stick straight hair, and I happily went to school that day. My friends, I thought, loved me better now. At least they liked my new hairstyle. But I couldn't play. My hair was new that day, and they left me alone after a while. Things got far worse later that day when a special lady came into town. She had come to find the girl with the prettiest curls. Only she could wear her crown. This curly-haired girl had a heart full of gold and was clever as clever could be. But they looked high and low. They looked everywhere, and yet she was nowhere to be seen. I ran to the bathroom with tears in my eyes, for my curls were no longer in sight. Then I remembered what mommy had told me before. Maybe, just maybe, I could put things right. I dashed back to the hall as fast as I could, but the lady saw me from a mile. Not just because I had my pretty curls again, but she also saw my beautiful smile. You see, that crown was not just about curls, and not just because my curls were pretty. That crown was to show that I didn't know that my curls are a part of me. A beautiful girl with beautiful curls, that's what I now see in the mirror. I love my hair. I love who I am. My name is Michaela. <laughs> okay, thank you.